All right, we're back on 40 Hours Talk. Christian McCaffrey, your first of many appearances on 40 Hours Talk, I'm sure. So thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Hey, let's take you back. Let's just start at the beginning. Back to the 2017 draft, the 49ers had that number two overall pick. And then, of course, on draft day, they trade back one spot and they get a Stanford guy, but it wasn't you. Was there any thought coming into that draft that you could end up here? You know, I didn't have a lot of thoughts on draft day. I just... I didn't have any predictions or I wasn't hoping to go one place or another. I was just just checking all the boxes I could and trying to be as patient as possible. I didn't even know if I was going to go day one or day two. You know, I had a list of teams that I thought might be on the radar. Um, but once again, I just I know how that goes when you start to think you're going to go one place. So I just let it all play out the way it was supposed to. So you do go to Carolina. Did you ever have any interaction with John Lynch or Kyle Shanahan in those years, uh, those first few years you had in, with the Panthers? Yeah, we, we, it was actually my first game um, of my career was out here and then um, played against them a couple times since then uh, that haven't gone too well. And so uh, just after the game saying hi, but nothing, you know, no more than those kind of interactions. Okay, so I know that the, the Panthers are keeping you in the loop, you know, when, when your name starts being talked about for a trade. When it actually went down on October 20, what was the first thoughts that came into your mind? There's a lot of emotions that go through your head at once, and it's difficult to process all of them because of how quick the turnaround was. Uh, I wasn't 100% sure if I was even going to get traded, and come that Thursday, I, I had a good clue that it was going to happen, and I got the call at 11 p.m. Uh, you're going to San Francisco, and right away I was thinking about uh, how good the offensive line was and how um, how, ma how many amazing players there are on the team and obviously having the, the best play caller in the league. So I was extremely excited. Um, but it was also, you know, in a way bittersweet. I was, you know, in Carolina for five years. I, I was a captain on that team and I wasn't able to say bye to any of those guys and I still believed we could win. And um, But you, you don't have time to process all those emotions. So I was on a flight the next day and practiced Friday for the Niners and here now. When the trade happened, the 49ers were 3-3. Three and three. Did that ever cross your mind? Like, okay, it's kind of on that bubble right now for the playoffs. Or, you know, how did you think that this season would play out or would have a chance to play out? I didn't think. Uh, I, I just showed up and tried to learn the offense as quick as humanly possible. And that was kind of where all of my attention was going, uh, was to learning the plays. And I was spending a lot of extra time with Brock Purdy, believe it or not, and uh, who was going over a lot of the initial plays with me and Bobby Turner and Anthony Lynn were spending extra time with me because I didn't know if I was going to even play in the game against the Chiefs when I first got traded and came uh, Saturday and there was a little package for me and so I was just focusing on doing my job and uh, didn't worry about anything that was out of my control. When you hear that you know it was a second round, third round, fourth and a fifth round pick that the 49ers gave up, does that give you an indication of just how much they value you? Definitely and that's a lot of picks and so um, the sense of urgency for me was, you know, on one end of the spectrum, it's like, okay, there's a team that feels like they'll be better without you. And then on the other side, it's, there's a team that really wants you. And um, I was happy to go somewhere where, you know, I felt wanted. And um, obviously there, there comes a pressure with that as well. But that's something that once again, I just do everything I can to be myself and uh, play the best ball that I can. How did you go about, I mean, you mentioned Brock Purdy, how did you go about just learning the offense? Or I guess you don't, you probably don't even know the offense, but you know it on a game plan by game plan basis. So how did you go about that initially in those first few weeks of just learning what your responsibilities were on game day? In the first few weeks, it was a lot of memorization of just the um, game plans for that specific week. And as I was learning the game plans, I was doing extra work on the formations uh, the shifts, the motions, the alignments, the running back routes, all the runs in the run game. And um, sooner or later, it started to all click. And as reps started to come and come, it became a little bit more familiar. And But in Kyle's offense, nothing, nothing's ever 100% familiar. There's always curveballs here and there. And that's what makes it so special. So uh, I'm still learning. I, I would imagine those first few weeks, you, you got to know more of Brock Purdy from just how he saw the game mentally as opposed to what he can actually do on the field. So what was your early impressions of Brock? Well, I knew he was selfless because he was spending a lot of extra times with me on the turf field, uh, which he didn't have to do, a lot of extra hours. And 
I'm big on being, uh, being able to verbalize the plays and being able to hear them because it's different when you're reading them, you can memorize them in a way, but when, when you're hearing them, that's how it's going to be uh, given to you in the huddle. So he came out and was spending a lot of extra time with me, and I knew he was selfless. I knew he had high character, and he was learning as well too. And so it was good for both of us, but uh, showed high character as a, as a rookie quarterback to go out there and spend extra time with me like that. I was very appreciative of it. And uh, looking back, it's no shock that he did. And, you know, he wants to be great, and it shows every day in practice. Did you click with him on a personal level? I mean, it seems like you guys have similar mentalities. You, you take this game very seriously. It's a very cerebral approach. Uh, I noticed right away that he was somebody who cared a lot. Not that, you know, that sounds a little bit weird as the NFL and everyone cares, but there was another level of urgency that I saw in him that even though he was, you know, the third-string quarterback coming into this year, he knew that he could play. He had a confidence in himself. He had a confidence in his ability to learn and understand. And he gave me a lot of tips that you know I didn't know that were not written on the on the sheets that were kind of game plan specific tips. And so I was once again just appreciative of that. And I saw saw greatness in him from right there. Did you really? You saw greatness in him. Well, I, there's a there's a way that a lot of rookies are, um, and I think I was probably a little bit like that myself. You know, I wanted to be great, obviously. Uh, but he doesn't act like a rookie. He doesn't act like a rookie in the huddle. Um, and, and he plays with a, a calm confidence that is rare, especially in rookie quarterbacks. I think most people, you know, when they found out that Jimmy Garoppolo was going to be out for the season, or at least a, a big part of it, at least through the regular season, it was like, oh, you know, there goes the, the season. That It's over. What was, you know, when you first found out that Jimmy's injury was something significant, how did you think that Brock would be able to respond? I didn't think. I, I Once again, I think for me, I try to take as many thoughts out of my head as possible and just focus on my job and, and stepping up and being there for him where, uh, where I can. And I think Brock's success is a major testament to Jimmy. Uh, you know, Jimmy has handled so many things like a true pro. And a lot of the things that Brock does Jimmy did, and that's from Jimmy that, that, that was passed on. And so it's a testament to him and that whole room and Coach Greasy getting those guys ready um, and, and Trey being there every day. I think it's a special room, especially when, when you have a quarterback room that's competitive like that and um, you have no egos, it's a special room. And so I just tip my hat to that whole room. You know, I, I've asked uh, John Lynch why he believes you fit in so well with this offense, and he says Christian McCaffrey fits in with any offense. But it just seems like this offense in particular really highlights your entire skill set. What have you learned about this offense and, and the way Kyle Shanahan installs a game plan that really suits what you do? Yeah, I think the, the coolest thing about this offense is that there's so many really good individual players who are very talented. Uh, who understand how to play well as a team and you have a coach who understands how to put those guys in the best situations and so it really is a team uh, and, and you feel that not just in the locker room but out there and the way guys are blocking the way guys like Brandon Ayuk and Debo are blocking and the way George blocks and uh, the linemen pushing the pushing guys downfield and uh, how you play without the ball it all comes together for a reason and there's purpose behind every play and uh, I think guys know that and, and that's what makes it special. When you first get your eyes on each week's game plan, including this you know, Saturday coming up against the Seattle Seahawks. Is there a part of you that's it's almost like Christmas morning just to kind of see what is going to be the way you attack a particular defense? Yeah, I think every week you're excited. Uh, you, you get you get up for, for the game plan, especially when it's a playoff game. But once again, you know, I try to take as, as many emotions out of it as possible and learn your job, perfect it, and come Sunday, execute. How do you do that? How do you take the emotion out of it? I don't know if there's a, um, I don't know if there's an actual uh, list on, on what to do and how to do that. I think you just, you just do it. I think you make it all about football. When you come in the building, you make it all about football. You learn the plays as best as possible. You go out and execute them, and then whatever emotions come with it, you let them be natural, and you go play with, play with emotion and play with juice. But um, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it's all about execution. And, doing everything you can to help your team win. And with that, there's a lot of natural emotion that comes. So, you know, you figure you don't need to add any more. Yeah. Uh, you just said the term, I don't know, it wasn't in reference to this. You said playing with juice. Well, you are playing with juice, yeah. uh, Kyle Juszczyk. <laughs> right, yeah. um, you've had, you've played with a fullback in the past, but 
We're talking Kyle Juszczyk, a guy who's been to seven straight Pro Bowls. What has he added to your game, or how do you guys make each other better? Yeah, I can't say enough good things about him. I think when you look at the tape, you see that he's a, one of the most versatile players, not just fullbacks. He's one of the most versatile players in the NFL, and he's able to do so many different things. He can truck you. He can make guys miss. He can block power. He can block outside zone. He can run double moves. Uh, it's impressive, his skill set and what he's able to do. Uh, but it's no shock when you're with him every day and you see what kind of work he puts in. He's a pro's pro. Uh, he's one of the hardest workers I've been around and understands the game. And so... For me, it's been nice not just picking his brain and getting a lot of information from him on this offense specifically, but taking little things from him physically and, and understanding how he moves and the angles that he takes and why, um, because he, he really does understand the game well. Is that something that you learn from by talking to him about the angles, or is it something just to feel that just experience? You, know, you kind of tap into that, uh, being able to play off each other through experience. I think experience is big. Uh, listening to how he sees plays is also really big, but uh, just when you watch the tape, I think is, it's the biggest thing. And he, he really understands leverage and angles and timing. And in this offense, that matters. You come to the 49ers this season, the last two years you know, did not go the way you wanted. You, you played in only 10 games with the Panthers. Uh, was the thought, and I, I know you, you try to take the emotion out of it and, and the thought of, um, other than just playing football, but did it ever cross your mind? Was it ever a goal of you know being the NFL Comeback Player of the Year? It was something that I had thought about for sure. You know, you want to. Um, I just want. I mean, I went through a lot of hard days in the last two years. Uh, football is my favorite thing in the world to to do, and um, it's kind of how I've identified myself in a lot of ways. And so, taking a step back and not being able to play was was good for me in a character sense and was really good for me as a man off the field and understanding life and uh, having a different perspective. But uh, it is what I love to do the most. And when that's taken from you, it, it hurts. So yeah, definitely being, you know, comeback player of the year was something in the back of my head. But uh, once again, you can't do that without, like I said earlier, perfecting your job, doing your job and going out and executing. And so um, you can have these big goals that when you really think about it, how do you get to those goals? It's all the same on the how. So. I really just focused on the how, and uh, here I am. Take it one day at a time and do the absolute best you can. All right, so you've, you've played in one NFL playoff game. That was back in 2018 with the, the Panthers. You've been with this organization now for three months. Um, you, there's a lot of guys in there who, who played a lot of postseason football. How do you approach it? How, what's your mindset? How do you feel that this team right now is situated as the playoffs begin? One thing about this team is they treat every week the same. Uh, they, don't, they don't mess around during the week. Everything is with intent. It's with urgency. And there's a lot of high character in that locker room. I think you could see that today in a rainy day. Guys are flying around trying to make plays uh, today. You know, Obviously, we're focused on Sunday, but guys are focused on being in the moment and having a great practice today, being diligent in meetings, taking extra notes, being here extra, taking care of your body. So. Um, just approach it like another week and go out and execute. All right, Christian. Thank you so much and Appreciate best of luck. This Thank you so much. Appreciate it.